Hello, let's crack open the PVA glue. Squeezy, squeeze. Uh, today I am doing a holograph plate with this lovely foxy design that I made. I'm really quite happy with this fox design. I was super chuffed. <laughs> um, I'm cutting up tiny bits of felt. I'm using tiny bits of arboreo rice and also tiny shards of tissue paper that are rolled up and cut up into tiny bits. How many times can we say tiny? Hmm. Anywho, if you are wondering what a collagraph is, it is a collage that you take a print from. So it's a method of printmaking. It's a very cool method because you can do it with all sorts of different bits and bobs that you find in the house or that you might already have. You can use tin foil or tissue paper or um, kitchen roll, um, sand paper, like just, you know, you can, you can get creative with it. Um, here I'm using some stems, some dried stems from some bunny grass tails from the garden. Um, I don't know whether that's the right name that I've given them, but that's what I think they're called. Anyway, they're dried and cut up and here we go. They're becoming a lovely texture. So yeah, the goal with a uh, collagraph is that you are trying to create textures, essentially. And the prints that you get are rather lovely. And yeah, hopefully you can see the process as we go along here today. If you would like to know a little bit more in depth about how you can make your own collagraph, because as you'll see through this, it is super easy. There's nothing too taxing about it. And it is very meditative and calming to do. If you'd like to delve into it, I do have some classes on Skillshare. I have one at the moment about collagraph specifically, and there is another one in the editing stage at the moment, which is coming soon. So do click on the link that's in my description. It will get you one free month's of premium Skillshare membership, which will allow you to watch all of my classes if you should wish. And you can also get access to all of the other classes on Skillshare, of which there are thousands. And they are all very inspiring and get you making and doing and viewing the world differently. You can explore your creativity in all sorts of ways. It's very cool. So I wanted to talk a little bit about doing things for the sake of doing things, I suppose. Because, yeah, this process is quiet. It's slow. And perhaps many people might look at it and think, well, sure, you get a nice result, whatever. But, um, but what's the point? Is it really worth the effort? Why would you even bother <laughs> going to all that time and effort? sticking tiny bits of tissue paper <laughs> over and over onto a piece of cardboard. I mean, I get it. <laughs> I do. I totally understand that it doesn't automatically seem like the thing to do with your time when there is a lot of other things pressing on you to get done. Absolutely. I'm not saying anyone should give up anything else in order to do this. But what I will say is that if you can do something like this, and it doesn't have to be this, but things which are like this as well, which you do because you find them calming or uh, just like they exercise your brain in some way. And just something about the process is what draws you to it, uh, not necessarily the end goal. The reason I enjoy printmaking so much is because there is an element of surprise every single time. <laughs> and um, you just don't know what's going to happen. You could spend all of your time making this plate. And as I'm doing it now, it might look lovely as a plate, but there is absolutely no guarantee that this plate is going to print well. It just, you just can't, guarantee it. You can kind of uh, think, of, you know, get used to certain processes and certain textures and think, well, you know, I, I think this will work. Uh, but there is no guarantee. And so you are absolutely forced to 
do it solely because you like getting there you like the you like the journey <laughs> everyone loves the word journey in a in a little ramble don't they um <laughs> but yeah you need to enjoy the getting there because if you pin all of your hopes on the end result mm, i mean you might be disappointed and that's no good. Um, you can get a lot from the process itself. As I say, in making this particular type of a collar graph, which I really like doing with the repetitive motion of putting tissue paper in little rolls down, um, I really like it because, yeah, the repetitive nature just kind of lets your mind float away for a little while you don't have to think too hard about what you're doing you can just let your hands do the work you can put music on you can sing along you can listen to an audio book you can just listen to a bird tweeting if you're nearby to a window um, and there is yeah there's nothing that you need to really do apart from let your hands carry on making you know, and then at the end, you're left with something which is a learning thing. You you found something from it. You created something which you hadn't made before and you gave it a go and you figured out whether or not it worked or not. You know, if that, I don't even know if I've made sense. I do, you know, on these kind of things, if I'm left to ramble, this is what happens. Um, you, you do get a ramble. <laughs> Anyway, I do really believe in making to make happy. That is my whole, my whole motto is making to make happy. And that is because you should make things for your own happiness, um, not just for what is created at the end. I mean, what is created at the end, as long as you're happy, happy and it's brought you a smile or brought somebody else a smile, then you've won haven't you? you you know you've made it you've made it to where you need to be anyway as you can see i'm in the stage of putting ink onto uh, this little foxy and this is the part where you can start to get a little bit excited uh, because you're almost at the end to see what result you're going to get and yeah it's exciting printmaking is exciting and even if i don't get the print that I want from this one that I'm trying, I can do it again because I can just ink that plate up again and go for a second time. There is absolutely nothing stopping me. And so, yeah, the pressure with printmaking is completely off. That's why I think it's such a great thing for beginner artists to dive into because it's an open doorway, you know, there's nothing to stop you the, from just trying again and it's a completely level playing field because none of us know whether or not it's going to come out okay so you know you might as well just give it a go eh, and just see what happens and you'll also find different um, outcomes which you weren't expecting but which you like you know so yeah it just kind of broadens your expectations of the art that you can make and how you can make it essentially this is one of my favourite bits where I just kind of encourage the print to come out by just giving it little pressures with my fingers, just sort of coaxing it through the paper, just giving it a little bit of encouragement to show its little face, you know. Um, your hands really are the best tools that you can use for Colograph. There are printing presses and all sorts that you can use in the printing world, but for Colograph at home particularly, the hands are great. Anyway, here is our little Foxy and let us see how we did. Ooh, hold your breath. <sighs> and let it go because it's all okay. <laughs> here is little Foxy. I'm super happy with how it came out. Look at those textures. Don't you just love them? 
anyway <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it if you did please do leave a comment down below let me know whether or not you've tried collar graph if you'd like to try it and or let me know any activities that you do just because you enjoy doing them i hope to see you again on the next video thank you very much for watching i'll see you again next time bye